For three evenings in October, G.S. Lakey was transformed from a school to a concert venue as part of an innovative performing arts project called Rock Show. Music is just like almost everything to me. Like, music is what kind of keeps me out of trouble and stuff, and I don't know what I would be without it, so. <laughs> Raymond. And I'm Abby Roberts. And today we are going to be interviewing Peyton Hansen. Hello. <laughs> so it has been 13 years since you have been here at Lakey as a student in the popular music classes like guitar and rock and pop. What memories do you have from back then? Oh my goodness. So many memories. I remember we would go out and goof. Like there was, I don't know if you still have it, but by the fishbowl there used to be the stairs or like the, the bleacher, or like the carpeted bleachers. And we would sit there and like, we would sometimes goof around, we would sometimes play guitar, but mostly I think it was us chatting and being ridiculous and being silly. Um, yeah, I remember, what else do I remember? I just remember it just like with my friends, just goofing off a lot and doing a lot of music, but also doing a lot of not music <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah. A lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Mr. Abbey would come by and you'd all of a sudden be like, dum, dum, dum. <laughs> every single time. But uh, yeah, no, yeah, I, I met like, I made some of my like best friends at Lakey during like the rock and pop stuff. So, yeah. Why do you think music and performing arts classes are important to have at a school setting? Not all schools have unique programs like GS Lakey. Why is it important? I think it's important because it gives people, especially kids, it gives kids an outlet to express themselves. It gives kids an outlet to, um, especially um, young teens and like pre preteens, a chance to explore themselves in like this world where it's, it's especially at that age, it's kind of pushing you to kind of find like what you're like, what you're into. A lot of people go into sports, but I think music has a innate ability kind of to, for self-discovery and first and for children to grow and learn more about themselves i think music is a great way for children to even like learn boundaries mm -hmm. about themselves what they you know if there's you know music they like music they don't like it's a good for connection especially like for myself it was like my bandmates became my best friends mm -hmm. and some of them still are like some of my best friends so um it was it was great music was just a wonderful way for me to make connections, for me to discover myself, for my friends to discover who they were, to just, I presented so many new opportunities, which was also very important. Cool. Yeah. So Peyton, you are currently working on a practicum as a musical therapist in our school district. Mr. Arve told me that you are an amazing singer and performer. Um, why did you pers not pursue music performance and to be a music artist? Instead, you went a different route as a music therapist. So I have always kind of been pushed by, you know, others around me, like my parents and, and by teachers to always do music performance. And as much as I love performing and I, and I have a really good time doing it and I like um, being on stage and I enjoy that, I just, I didn't find it as fulfilling as music therapy and as much yeah so as much as I love performing it wasn't really like my passion to be a performer I, I have friends and I I have friends right now who performing is their passion and that's exactly what they're doing they're going on tour and they're doing albums and they're doing all this this crazy fun stuff but for me I was very give or take with that like if it were so happened to go on tour or to make an album which I've done before I'm like that's awesome that's super fun but it was never a super like I was never super passionate about it um I'm a little bit more of a of kind of a private person mm -hmm. I would say so I'm not super 
I'm not super into like bearing it all out on stage, which can be difficult when you're when you're singing and you're the lead singer. So just I don't know, it wasn't really a hundred percent my thing, but music therapy definitely definitely is. So cool. Yeah. Um, what does music therapy do? Uh, what does the job entail? And perhaps we can get you to work at Lakey. Tell us about music therapy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so music therapy, there's a million ways to define music therapy. Um, kind of the way that it's defined right now is music therapy is a model of creative therapy that uses music to help people reach individual uh, reach their individual like needs or goals so that could be spiritual that could be social um that could be uh emotional physical um yeah just a uh, cognitive goals um just a whole range of things whatever the client is needing whatever they tell you they need or whatever you when you do assessments with them um whatever you think they may need mm-hmm. um i think it's funny because uh there's always definition, like there's a definition for music therapy, but I had a professor be like, the best way to describe music therapy is to like tell a story that like really, a music therapy that like changed you and realized that it could work. And like, I don't know, but I had an experience in my first practicum with this woman. She was in her 80s. Um, she had a diagnosis of dementia. She was probably in like the later stages of it, probably like stage three, which is the time where when a person with dementia starts forgetting family members, they might not remember a family member's name. Um, walking starts maybe becoming difficult um and I would meet with this woman and so she couldn't remember her husband's name but we as soon as I started playing um Tennessee Waltz she could sing all the songs all the sorry all the words to Tennessee Waltz she knew all the words to Tennessee Waltz she knew um all the words to um oh uh an Elvis Presley song that we did so it was just it was really fascinating to see this woman who couldn't remember her like own children's names her own husband's name but can still remember music and like the joy that it brought her Mm -hmm. how much joy and how much you know um emotion it would bring up in her as well yeah yeah so you will be performing on november 28th for our gator stock 42 along with other lakey alumni from 13 years ago what can we expect from this concert it's going to be, I think it's going to be high energy. It's going to be super fun. I'm going to have to, you know, stretch before because I'm old now. <laughs> um, yeah, I get to I get to hang out with uh, my old teachers and, and perform with my old teachers. Uh, I get to hang out with my old classmate, um, classmates, Mason and Mason Holdren and Keaton Spilsky. And I'm very excited for that. We're going to be doing some like 80s hits, mm-hmm. uh, some Joan Jet, which is exciting, which was always my go to when I was 12, 13, so <laughs> that's really exciting. Yeah, hopefully it's a lot of fun. Hopefully it's high energy and everyone has a good time. <laughs> um, finally, we're going to do a this or that. You can only choose one, not both. Are you ready to play? I'm ready to play. Okay. Jazz or rock? Oh, rock. Oh. Um, performing or writing songs? Writing songs. Joan Jett or Taylor Swift? <laughs> that is such a hard one. I'm going to have to go with Joan Jett. <laughs> BC or Alberta? Uh, BC for like the, the environment and like kind of the community that I have there. But I have to choose one, don't I? Um, <laughs> I gotta say BC. It's so nice there. (laughs) Snow cones or Slurpees? Oh, Slurpees. 100%. (laughs) Video games or Netflix? Oh, video games. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you so much for being interviewed today. We're so glad to get to know you. We look look forward to seeing you perform at Gatorstock on the 28th of November. (laughs) Yeah. Very excited. Thanks, guys. Yeah. (laughs)